So I guess we were kind of like half right about this whole situation. Because remember when we talked about Rashad Bateman just removing a bunch of Raven stuff off his Instagram and say, hey, look, we cannot sleep on that Instagram stuff because whenever a player does that, either one or two things are going to happen. Either they are getting ready to get a contract extension from that team or they're getting ready to get traded. I, of course, thought Rashad Bateman would get traded, but... Eric DeCosta said in Graven, no, you ain't got this one, my friend. We are signing him to a contract extension. So y'all don't sleep on when a player removes a bunch of pictures of the team from their social media. Because that's a telltale sign every time. Now, something else that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. I felt like the Baltimore Ravens, before the draft, they were going to make at least three uh, transactions. They made one when they signed Deontay Hardy. They made two when they extended Rashad Bateman. The third one, I mean, unless they do something today, then I guess we'll be two out of three. So whatever, we'll see. We still got time. Though. But anyway, Rashad Bateman, who got a surprising contract, and we're still waiting on the details of it. Now, Brian McFarlane did say today that we probably won't get the details till sometime next week, especially with the draft going on today. Rashad Bateman probably won't sign till early next week. So, okay, we'll be patient with that. Still keep seeing people say three years, 15 mil, five mil per, which would be crazy to me. That would be a crazy steal in my opinion, especially if Rashad Bateman ends up being the Rashad Bateman we hope that he can be. But anyway, Rashad Bateman. Um, of course, a lot of people have had a lot to say about Rashad Bateman over the years. And Rashad Bateman has, of course, caught wind of a lot of that. There have been times when Rashad Bateman has actually chimed in and responded. There have been a lot of times when he hasn't said anything. But Rashad Bateman, after getting his contract extension, after that contract extension was announced by the Baltimore Ravens, he took to Instagram to share a message for all of his haters. Let's listen to Drizzy. The non-believers, the underachievers, the tweet and deleters. You guys make me sick to my stomachs, fam. Honestly, if you guys want to look in my eyes, you guys want to do something? You guys, that's what I thought. No, that's what I thought. Mm. <laughs> so, Rashad, baby, let it be known. Like, look, y'all can hate all you want to, but... I got my contract extension. And I get it because with Rashad Bateman, uh, a lot of people, they took it beyond football with Bateman. And they made it personal. I don't ever think that's a, a good thing to do. Um, but with Rashad Bateman, some people who felt like he either would or even should be traded, they got a little disrespectful with it. And that's never okay. It's never okay to get personal or disrespectful, no matter how you feel about a player. Critiquing a player for on-field stuff, okay, I get that all day. But that's where it should start and stop. Um, but with Bateman, it's tricky. It's very tricky with him posting a message like that because fans don't forget. So now with him posting that, Fans are going to remember, oh, you posted that Drake message, and that's cool. Hey, no problem with it. But I feel like that puts even more pressure on him because the moment, because we've seen it before. This ain't even got nothing to do with Bateman, but we've seen this before, even recently. The moment he slips up, the moment he makes a mistake, he'll make mistakes. All football players make, make mistakes for sure. It happens. But fans are going to be watching him even more critically now because remember, Remember with Hollywood. Remember with Hollywood. What's the point in using soldiers if what's the point in having soldiers if you ain't gonna use them? And we remember that tweet. And I remember the night that he tweeted that. It was after that Steelers game. And fans did not let him live that down. They waited. Every time he dropped the football, anytime he dropped the pass. They will, oh, what's the point of having soldiers? They were always quick, they were quick to bring it up to every time. So with Rashad Bateman, with him putting that on his IG, say, hey, cool. I, look, again, I ain't got no problem with it. But you know how fans are, and fans are very, very petty. But, again, I, I did appreciate his message. And he letting it be known, like, hey, y'all can say what you want to say, but I got my money. However much money that is, we don't know yet. We'll find out soon. But team, keep it clean. We got a lot more to talk about because today is draft day. And of course, y'all make sure y'all come to the live stream later so you don't miss the live stream. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, and leave a like on the video because two things, it helps out the channel a whole lot. And also, it'll help you get notified a lot more because YouTube be slipping sometimes, but it'll help you get notified a lot more when we drop a video or when we do a live stream so now 
with uh, Rashad Bateman, him getting locked up for the next couple of years, contract-wise, uh, hopefully not on the field. No, not on the field, because Rashad Bateman be getting so open all the time. There's uh, another wide receiver, possible wide receiver, that a lot of people haven't been talking about like crazy. And let's listen to this question from my guy, Lewis. And hear what he had to say. He said, what's up, Engraven? Why is nobody talking about a likely position change to wide receiver? Not a complete position change, but having him line up at the X or Z would be a serious match matchup mismatch with his shiftiness and his size. What are your thoughts on this? Oh, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Isaiah Likely. Uh, a lot of people have been saying that recently, um, really over the years. Um, Isaiah Likely possibly moving to wide receiver or working at wide receiver. And I'm sure that's something that the Baltimore Ravens will incorporate because they know that he can he can do a lot. I mean, they, they had Mandrews line up there too. So Mandrews could do it. I know Isaiah Likely could do it too. I'm sure they'll mix and match that up plenty of times. Um, but it's nice to have receivers line up at receiver that are actual receivers. Because a tight end, while Isaiah Likely used to play receiver, we know at Coastal Carolina, he used to play receiver sometimes. But um, – He's a tight end now. So, yeah. that That's just me, though. That's just me. But I do get it, like, having him line up at receiver sometimes because he's just big and he could catch. He could move. Uh, he, could, he could do a lot, man. So he is very – um he's versatile. He ain't just – I guess – I can't even say he's not a traditional tight end because ain't no such thing as a traditional tight end no more. These tight ends, they moving like crazy now. So Isaiah Likely, he one of them guys, man. But anyway, he also said uh, – plus T.D. Barrett recently gave you a shout-out. And y'all are darn near my favorite two YouTube guys. It's a small world now. Much love, brother. Keep being a positive influence. Oh man, I, TD Baird is my guy, man. I I, I love TD Baird. I, I um I am happy for him. That dude got like fifty million subscribers now. Now I think he got like maybe like two or three million subscribers now, and he be doing his thing. He been doing his thing for a while. I remember back when um he when I used to do Madden videos. Uh, he had hit me up on an email, and he was like, oh, uh, can you check out my videos, and what, what do you think I should put in my videos, what do you think I should do with my videos to just make them better, and I looked at his videos, and, and I told him, and <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't saying it was from me, but he, like, found his niche, and he took it, ran with it, and literally took off, I, I love seeing him at different, like, like the different EA Sports events, he's been collabing with all these different NFL players. That boy TD Barrett, he got it, man. He got it. He been killing it. He been crushing it. He does things his way, and he does a, a great, great, great job. And I, like ninety nine percent of the time, he keeps it clean too. So I'm like, all right, TD Barrett, he do that unintentionally, but I love TD Barrett. That is my guy. He will forever be my guy. Uh, and I am just I'm super, super, super proud of just all the success that he's had uh, in his YouTube career. So special shout out to him. I, I hope I ain't even gonna say I hope he's doing good. I know he's doing good. I ain't hit him up in a long time, but I'm just always happy to see him doing so many different things uh, with YouTube, through YouTube, through EA Sports, through with, with the MLB, with just everybody. With NFL, he's just been killing it and he's been killing it for a long time. Our next question came from Fee Boulder. He is a new team, keep it clean patron. So shout out to my guy. He said this ahead of the draft. It's funny too. He said, first question. Engraving, what's good, man? I hope your family and loved ones are doing well. Hey, you're doing really good. I appreciate you. He said, I finally have a question for you after following you for the past few years and subscribe for the first month. Appreciate that. Thank you. He said, although many people are excited to see that Lamar has dropped weight to bring back that lightning speed. Yes, we're excited about it. Uh, do you think... He said, do you think this weight loss is due to the lack of offensive line for 2024? Uh, I don't know about you, but if I drop the extra 10 to 15 pounds, I could create an extra wiggle out of that pocket. Hey, look, I, I hope it's not for that. And I hope it doesn't have to be for that. I hope it can be a bonus uh, because we don't want Lamar Jackson to maybe, maybe he's like, look, man, my offensive line last year, it was rough. It was rough. It, was all right, but it, it, it had a lot of time. It could be rough. So. Last year I put on some weight. I was, I was a little bigger, so I could still move now. But now I'm really about to move, just in case, because uh, he he might be looking like, man, I lost Morgan Moses, um, I lost um, John Simpson, uh, I lost Kevin Zeitler. I still got Linda Flinder, uh, but Ronnie Stanley, he he'll be back. Hopefully he'll be healthy, but I don't know if he'll be healthy. So I gotta be ready to take off just in case that offensive line looking a little shaky. But hopefully that's not what the case is. But that is a really good observation. We'll see tonight. What the Ravens start doing about offensive line. Oh, we may have to wait till tomorrow. But 
they got to address it. Next question came from my guy, Javo. He said, with the draft approaching, well, it's here now, but he sent this days ago. He said, with the draft approaching, what are three draft predictions you think will happen for the entire NFL and three to five draft predictions for the Baltimore Ravens? EDC still need two more moves for your other prediction to happen pre-draft. Hey, see, my guy Javo is with it. And this was before the Rashad Bateman um, extension. So, again, we, we two for three. All he got to do is do one, one more over the next uh, eight hours. One more. Well, by the time you see in this recording, it'll probably be like seven, six hours, depending on how long. But anyway, uh, three draft predictions I think will happen for the entire NFL. Um, I, I think that uh, Caleb Williams, I think he'll go number one. Uh, I think that um, uh, I think Jaden, uh, I think that he'll go two. And I think the first receiver that ends up getting drafted uh, will be Marvin Harrison Jr. So there we go. They go, they go three for the NFL. Uh, and three to five draft predictions for the Ravens. Uh, I'm only going three. Uh, but number one, um, hmm, I am going to say tonight on round one, who, the person who I want is not the person who I think they're going to get. Because um, I, I I want them to draft Xavier Worthy. Um, for him to stretch the field. Uh, for him, And he's not just a field stretcher now. He could do the, the underneath stuff too now. Um, but that that's who I want the Baltimore Ravens to get. But I just, I'm not going to fall in love with it happening. Because I just feel like it's not going to happen. I know they still got to get offensive line and whatnot. But um, I'm going to say they'll take... An offensive lineman tonight. Um, another prediction for them, I could see them trading back uh, later on. You know what? I'm going to make a different prediction. I'm going to say they trade up in the second round. That's what we're going to say. We're going to say they trading up in the second round. And one more um, prediction is that they come away with somebody who ends up being a, maybe not a starter, but a, a significant contributor in round four. So those will be my predictions for uh, the Baltimore Ravens. So that, that ain't nothing too crazy, nothing like that, but that's what I'm going with. Next question came from my guy Oreo Cookie. He said, hey, Graven, it's been a while since I sent one. I'm constantly thinking about college now. But anyway, how would you feel about us trading down to get some extra picks? Or are you very uh, valuable on the fifth year option? Hey, it's, it's a, a bit of a, it all just depends on who. Um, that fifth year option, it can make things not necessarily easier, but it gives you a little more time. Um, if you don't have the fifth year option, then you got to make a, a faster decision on that contract. Um, so a player could hey, a player could underplay being a first round pick or a player could overplay being a second to seventh round pick. So it all just depends. Um, it, it all just depends on the player. Uh, it depends on your team, how often you'll use that player, or how big that player will be a part of what it is that you do. So yeah, so much just depends. And he said, P.S., wanted to give another weight loss. I have, wow, oh my goodness. He said, I have now, I'm now down to 222 pounds after being 344, equaling just over 120 pounds lost in 11 months. That is a lot. That is great, though, man. That should tell you, no matter how big you are, you can lose the weight if you want to, and it just takes high self-control and discipline. Wow, that is something right there. I'm happy for you. That's great, man. That is great. In 11 months. So that's about, I think that's about 11, 11 pounds a month, something like that. But um, that's a lot. That, 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 that is great, man. You like... You're killing it, man. So good. Hey, keep doing your thing. You say you're getting ready for college, too. So my guy is uh, he getting out of high school and, and getting ready to just crush it, man. So I love it, man. Um, we happy for you. I appreciate you sharing this with us because you continue to be uh, a model for all of us to look at uh, as far as the uh, the weight loss. Not even just weight loss. It ain't even, well, it got something to do with weight loss because that's obviously a big journey you're going on. But um, just not quitting. Not quitting because something like that could be super, super easy to quit on, super, super easy to give up on, super, super easy to be like, you know what, I ain't doing this no more. But you showing us through how, how you've your consistency uh, is showing us that 
that that matters a lot and that makes all the difference in the world next question came from my guy bb he said i'm not sure now this was before the rashad Bateman extension he said i'm not sure if we as ravens fans have the best outlook on who edc is providing for lamar as a unit uh, we all know the importance of protection for the quarterback he put protection in all caps now uh, we also know how young ravens offensive line is trusting in your players reflects how the team is built adding a few depth pieces behind this young core of players is something i believe edc will do without question now if Ravens are truly in win now mode, if you're not all in, you're all out. Hey, yeah, EDC said it. Uh, Ravens should trade this year's first round and next year's second round pick for Devontae Adams. There's no other wide receiver in the league that will fit the playability of this offense. Bringing him in would open up this offense and truly give Lamar a wide receiver one. Nothing against Zaya Bateman, but this move would allow Lamar to be Lamar, along with Mandrews, likely Ricard, and most of all, King Henry in the backfield. It will put them over the top. This move would also give Adams the opportunity to win a championship and be stable in a winning organization. Hashtag stop playing and build. That is um trade this year's first and next year's second round pick for Devontae Adams. I don't even think that's what he got traded to the uh what's it called for to the Raiders for. I think he got traded for like was it a set? Was it second and third or third and fourth? It, it was somewhere we was looking at. It as like, what? That's that's what they traded for him. But um, I don't think they would do that. A first th this year's first and next year's uh, second. Devontae Adams is nice though. He's nice, very physical wide receiver. The route running is amazing. Um, the hands are definitely there. Um, got a decent amount of speed. He ain't no burner or nothing like that. But he got a good enough amount of speed. Uh, but. It sound like you're talking about something that Rashad Bateman could possibly be. Hey, I, I, I ain't saying Rashad Bateman Devontae Adams now, but um, I'm not mad at it. I do like that you still trying to – and see, he didn't talk about anything about trading Bateman in this because, uh, again, this was before Bateman got his extension. But he is talking about adding to what we have already, which I do love. Uh, trading the first-round pick to get Devontae Adams. Uh I, I, I don't think it would even take that much. Um, oh, first round and next year's second. I don't think it would take that much. But if they were to get a Devontae Adams, I wouldn't be mad at that. Uh, if they were to get a DK, well, we ain't talking about DK Mega. But anyway, uh, if they were to upgrade, continue to upgrade the, the receiver room, I think that is something that, in my opinion, should be a no-brainer. And, and something that should definitely still be done one way or another. First round pick this year and next year second for Devontae. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about that one. And the last question to send us off into the draft later on tonight came from my guy TJ. He said, get DK Metcalf since they say they're listening to what Lamar likes at wide receiver. Go get him. Lamar recruited him publicly. Go get what Lamar wants. Stop talking about it and be about it. EDC and Hobbs, go get Lamar, a guy besides Mark Andrews. DK Metcalf stays open, and he's an all-around beast. Justin Jefferson out there, too. Get Lamar a guy. See, my guy TJ, he, he, like, he, he ain't with the games, man. He like, Ravens, y'all need to get on it. Y'all need to get on it now. So tonight, we'll see exactly how the Ravens address whatever area of need they going to address. But remember, tonight, first round, it is the start, but it's not the finish but this is the finish of this video so thank you be clean make sure you subscribe to the channel turn your notifications on so you do not miss not a single update not a single live stream like tonight and not a single ravens news leave a like on the video because it helps out the channel a ton i appreciate y'all i love y'all and we are